Hey everyone, my name is Armin and I just took my MCAT last month and I already got my results back and I was able to get a 132 on the chemistry and physics section uh, which is the 100 percentile and I just want to give you 7 tips on how you can get the same score as me. Tip number 1. Ignore the official breakdown of the section given by the AMC. So AMC claims that this section is 25% physics, 15% organic chemistry and 65% general chemistry. I had one general chemistry passage. The rest of my MCAT was organic chemistry and physics. Just ignore what AMC is saying. It could totally be all physics, physics and organic chemistry. And we hate organic chemistry. We all hate physics. So prepare for the worst case scenario. All right, so tip number two. Don't read the books twice unless you absolutely have to. So let's look at these books. These are the books that are tested on the chemistry and physics section. That's roughly a thousand pages of textbook. You don't want to be reading that more than once unless you really have to. Instead of rereading the books, hoping that you're going to get it on the second time you're reading the book, just practice, do problems. That's active recall. Active recall is significantly better than the passive rereading of the books. So focus on that instead. All right, so if you're not reading the books again, how can you improve your score then? By doing a bunch of problems. Active recall is so much better than just passively rereading these textbooks. That's not gonna get you anything. Instead of rereading this, focus on active recall. Sometimes you might have to reread a few chapters. I had to do that for electrochemistry. That's fine, but don't reread the whole thing unless you absolutely have to. Tip number three, utilize the space repetition. So, you know, a lot of folks use Anki cards for the MCAT and those are really good. I did that. But for this section, I don't know how helpful Anki cards are. There are two main things you have to memorize for this section. And those are the organic chemistry reactions and the physics formulas. So this is how I memorize them. I went over on one day, just memorize everything. The next day, I have a whiteboard in a corner of my room. Let me just show it to you right over there. So I just went on my whiteboard and I tried to recall as much of the organic chemistry reactions as I could. Just do that every other few days until you know every single formula in the formula sheet, until you know every single reaction in organic chemistry. So let's talk about tip number four. I already talked about it a bit, knowing the formulas and being able to do the math that is required for the MCAT. When you see a problem that involves numbers on the MCAT, you should be happy. These are just plugging numbers in and getting an answer. So you shouldn't feel bad when you see numbers on the MCAT. Numbers are good, trust me. The questions that don't involve numbers are harder. So make sure you know the formula sheet, every single formula. Don't skip a single one. They can ask about anything. And make sure you're good at scientific notation and you're good at approximating and doing quick math problems easily. Quick math, that's the tip. All right, so we're almost at the end of the video. Let's talk about tip number five. When it comes to physics, be the jack of all trades and master of none. They test a lot of content on the physics section of the MCAT. This is the book for physics. I think, let's see, it's 540 pages, right? So there's a lot of content covered. You don't need to master them all. The MCAT questions are fairly easy when it comes to physics. The problem is that some people focus on mastering a few of these sections on physics and they ignore the other parts. One of the main reasons I was able to get a 132 on the MCAT was because we had a bunch of magnetism questions. Folks didn't prepare for magnetism because it's not on the official practice material that is given by the AMC. So people just assume that magnetism is not that important. And those questions were so easy. They were just plug-in numbers and just basic magnetism concepts. I was able to answer them very quickly just because I had a very basic understanding of magnetism. Some people didn't have that understanding and they weren't able to answer that. And that put me ahead of them. You don't need to be mastering this concept. So let's say you have 20 days to prepare for physics. Instead of spending that 20 days to, to get really good at dynamics, kinematics, and all of those things, learn everything. Just read this whole book, know a little bit of everything, and know the formulas. You're gonna be fine for the physics section. Tip number six. So tip number six goes against some of the other tips that I already talked about. I advocated for active recall. I told you guys to practice instead of just listening or reading the material. But when you're not doing the, anything productive, when you're just running, when you're working out, listen to an MCAT podcast. So there's a good podcast called the uh, MCAT Basics, I think. 
I listened to pretty much all of the episodes as I was doing other stuff, as I was cleaning in my room, working out, running around, doing my stuff that weren't MCAT related. Now, this isn't really a good form of learning because it's not active learning, you're just listening to other people talking about the concepts, but it's so much better than just wasting that whole time. So listen to podcasts, watch videos about the MCAT, make sure you cover all the content gaps so they can't surprise you with a random concept that you've never seen before. So let's talk about tip number seven. This tip is about how you should behave on the test day. Don't panic. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. This section is going to be difficult. They usually try to scare you with this section. I felt so bad about my performance on chemistry physics. I almost voided my MCAT, but you know, I ended up with a good mark. So don't panic, stay calm. If you don't know the answer to a question, Take a reasonable guess, flag it, move on, don't waste time on it. And trust me, if you're finding the section extremely difficult, it was probably extremely difficult for others. I remember after my test day, I went on Reddit and I wrote a reaction to the MCAT post. On my reaction, I predicted that my score is going to be 127 for this section. I ended up with a very, very higher mark than that. So just trust the curve, trust the way they're marking the MCAT do your best and don't panic all right guys i can talk about the chemistry and physics section of the mcat for hours but you shouldn't be watching videos for hours you should go study and do practice problems so i'm not gonna waste your time anymore if you enjoyed the content and you want to see how i was able to get a good mark on the other sections of the mcat or you want more specific videos about the chemistry or physics part of the mcat please leave a comment down there and i'll get back to you i know you can all get a 528 on the mcat so have fun studying and definitely take breaks, you don't want to burn out, and take care of yourself. I'll see you on the next video.